and you really must tune in. He's ironic, iconic, maybe bionic. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the genius. He's a genius. Hi, ladies and gents. Michael Burhan here for another vlog, and I'm basically here to talk about the Kickstarter for Red Ash. Now, I want to talk about it because there's a bit of a serious issue that's transpired around this. And the reason being is that you've kind of got two divided sides on it. There's a for side and there's an against side. You know, there's a few YouTubers who've done some videos on it so far, including Xander Scullin, who put out a very profound video in regards to why he feels that the Red Ash Kickstarter is kind of a slap in the face. We have Anthony Fernandez, aka uh, Megas X1, who talks about some really bad Kickstarters and basically the way not to do it. You also have videos uh, that I did a little research with the internet, and Aristocrat as well, and uh, a few other YouTubers to kind of clarify what's been going on and the reason why people are kind of not so receptive to this as they were to the last one. Now, for those of you who don't know, Kickstarter is a means of backing projects and helping independent companies come out with something new. So if you've got an independent company and you want a project funded, Kickstarter is kind of the way to go. It's a way to get some tax-free money from people. And also, if you're a game developer, a way for people to kind of back a project and get some input into that project, so to speak. So, you know, you go directly to the fans instead of actually producing money via a company or trying to acquire funding elsewhere. Now, this is where kind of the... the it has a, a shade of grey, so to speak, you know, where the lines kind of blurred. And... It's all down to kind of the funding scale. People who donate via Kickstarter or via Patreon or via these other means of like social funding, as you like to call it, they're not considered investors, but they are. Literally, that's what they are. You offer them a little incentive, like a copy of the game or some little extras, and also a community outreach to kind of put their point of views across. Now, with Mighty Number no. 9, the issue behind this game was it was kind of mirrored in controversy due to the fact that there was this group that was opened, the forum wasn't maintained, you had community managers who technically didn't know how to do their job. I'm not going to go into the situation behind that. If you want to learn out a little bit more about that, I've got videos below where you can actually talk about that situation. And one of those community managers was kind of affecting the way that the game was working. She was working on design. She was trying to put an, a kind of a feminist approach to the characters, you know. And the worst thing about it was she never even played a Mega Man game. So you've got someone who's been put into the company, who has no experience, who has a gender bias, which is what she had. She wanted it to be a female robot, even though these are robots. They, they have no gender. They're male or female. They're just a robot, which is firstly. Then you had um, the fact that she was actually associated with someone in the company because she was dating someone in the company. That's how she got her position, which really killed the whole motivation behind it. If you've got a community manager, the community manager is there to kind of talk and cultivate your audience. It's like if I had a community manager for my company, I'd basically have them talk to each and every one of you and direct your views towards me in order to make my product better. That's what it was supposed to be. It was a way for kind of the investors to see results and to converse with those who know what they're talking about. She didn't. Secondly, there was kind of a, an issue where mods were banning people. They were censoring posts, which is another thing, which is a no-no. You do not censor your investors. You do not censor. If someone came to me and said, I want you to put money into my product and you told me to shut the fuck up, I would take my money out and I would run. I would sue you. I would take you to court and sue you for liable. Because in the end, you are not giving your investors what you're offering them. That's strike two. And then strike three is the fact that the game hasn't been released yet. Concept got a great deal of money. They wanted... Uh, basically 900 grand to finance Mighty Number no. 9 and instead they got close to 4 million plus they ended up insulting people by calling us all slackers the amount of emails I got from the Mighty Number no. 9 admins sending directly to me calling me a slacker backer and telling me to invest more money you do not pressure 
you don't pressure your investors to invest more money in your product when they want to see results. You did not show them results. You then started bantering us for more stuff like, I want to finance a cartoon. Get the game out first. Oh, I want to do this. Get the game out first. Oh, I want to do that with the project. Get the game out first. Number one initiative in brand awareness, people, is if you want your brand to come out, you show results. You get the game out. Now, last but not least, they partnered with Deep Silver. That's number five on this issue. And instead, you know, that's kind of one of the reasons why the game's been delayed. They haven't shown, you know, results on what we want to see. They haven't shown us, you know, the playable demo was a bit lackluster from those who've played it. I haven't played it, but a lot of people who've played it have seen lackluster results on that. And, you know, some are saying, oh, it's because, you know, Inafune is kind of outdated in his ideas. It's more the fact that they're not concentrating on, on releasing this game. This isn't their sole priority, which they said it was going to be, because they released other games during that time. They partnership, They partnered with Xbox One on top of that to kind of produce a new game for that platform, which means they've got additional cash coming out. Now, think about all those excess things here. You've got these bad community management, you've got bad brand awareness, and you've got literal company pestering its backers to give them more money. All these five things in common are the reason why Inafune has been getting such a bad rep. So you would basically scale back and say, okay, let's get the game out. Hopefully once the game's out, everybody's going to be jumping on board. Everyone's going to be happy. And we're finally going to get that Mega Man game that we hope we wanted, that 2.5D next-gen Mega Man game. And then he releases another Kickstarter, asking us for more money to finance a demo, because that's what Red Ash is. It's a demo. It's a proof of concept that he wants to put out there so that he can gain initial investment afterwards. There's a whole load of shit that's wrong with this. Now, this is where I kind of agree with Xandra and also Magus's opinion on this. And this is where I kind of differ from Johnny Millennium, aka the Happy Console Gamer, who's kind of, he's neither here or there. He's in between. You know, he's like, okay, I'm neither for or against. I'm just going to put my opinion across. And I, and I respect Johnny for that. But... On that note, if you are, I say, for instance, and this is an example, it's not just for Kickstars, this is for everybody out there, like Patreons, uh, for any social media funding. If I wanted money off of you to finance a project, I am not going to sit there and shit on you. And a lot of people who have been basically putting out Patreons, and I can name you a YouTuber who's currently doing that, who I've been seeing on Twitter, on Facebook, sitting there belittling his fans and still ask people to donate to his channel because he makes quality content. And you expecting people to kind of fund your projects. No. I'm sorry, no. The same thing goes for Inafune and Concept. You have treated your investors badly. You have treated people like shit. You have treated your fans like basically the way you said that Capcom treats its fans. Because you've been biased, you've been providing extra content to US backers instead of UK backers and European backers because, well, we have to deal with it. And I got an email specifying that. Your forums are biased, you censor people, you use an over sensual, you know, a, a kind of a sensationalist approach to adminning the people who are financing your game. Because this forum, the only way you can access this forum is if you're a backer. Through the peer pressure and through the promote ways that you promoted yourselves, it's bad press, bad publicity, and all in all, bad business management. If you were being backed by anybody else, if I was an investor in your company, I would have pulled out by now and sat there and just went, it was your own fault because you mishandled your company. Now, moving on to the next Kickstarter that you're trying to do, People aren't funding it because they, you know, well, apart from those who are like, well, we're still fans. We want to we want to keep helping you because of the fact that you've had so much bad press and PR. So that's where the problem lies. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm one of those, you know, a lot. I think a lot of it for me is just due to the fact that I can't afford to do that. I'm not in a financial stable position, so I'm not, you know, 
backing this project, but I wouldn't. It's a demo. You're telling me that you can't sit there and put together a proof of concept that you can show a developer like Sony or show a company like Microsoft or Nintendo and say, hey, we can make this exclusively to your console. You can do. There is no reason this should be on Kickstarter. None at all. And this is where the problem lies because it's companies like Concept that are giving everybody else a bad name. Because you're going to look at the next independent company and say, yeah, oh, I'm not going to fund that. And those are the, the companies that you need to fund. They're the reasons why the industry is going to thrive over the next six or seven years or the next decade. The independent companies, games like Shovel Knight, for instance, are going to make it. Games like Pixel Noir that should have been funded but wasn't are going to be the reason why we're going to look forward to gaming as gamers. And we've got to stop all this bullshit and this political bias. And Concept are no better than Capcom for what they've done and the way that they have treated their investors. And that's the key here, folks. Investors. So you can sit there and you can call people uh, idiots or you can post memes and say how stupid people are or how someone agrees with your opinion. But in the end, anyone who has backed Mighty Number no. 9, including myself, is an investor. And as an investor, I will look cautiously at the next concept investment. Because as a company, all he's doing is trying to get a little bit of extra cash that he can put straight into his pocket. Because I guarantee you that the rest of that that, that funding that he got for Mighty Number no. 9 hasn't been put into the game. He's probably kept there on the sidelines for something else or put into other projects or as a way for him to kind of just say, hey, I've got an extra three million in my back pocket. And all this animated bullshit, the fact that Mighty Number no. 9 is now going to be a live action movie that's been licensed. It shows you that concept of thinking about themselves more than about the fans. And that's the truth. So, Inafune, I wish you the best. I hope you work well. I can't wait for my copy of Mighty Number no. 9 for my Nintendo Wii U that I get from digital download and my Xbox 360. But I will guarantee you that I will not be investing in any more of your projects because as far as I'm concerned, you have put a stain on an otherwise just system that should be there to assist independent companies and get them off their, get them basically at a level where they can start working on these projects and then move on to self-financing and working with companies like Microsoft, like Sony, like Nintendo, who have basically said that they want to work with independent companies to develop and cultivate the next indie project. So there is no need for you to double dip in the same platform that you use to finance one game that hasn't even been released yet. And I've got a lot of friends who are, you know, looking forward to this project. I am. I'm looking forward to the fact that Mega Ran is going to be producing a soundtrack for it. You know, a one song that's going to be on the, the title credits. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to, you know, Mighty Number no. 9 as a game. But as for the anime, I don't really give a fuck. As for, like, the movie, I don't give a fuck. All I care about is as a gamer, as an investor, I want to get my money's worth. And I'm sorry, they shouldn't be focusing all this other stuff when they should be focusing on making Mighty Number no. 9 the best game that it, that it should be and apologising to everyone for the way that this was handled. That's what I want. I want a public apology. And people stop getting butthurt because someone stated an opinion. Because you know what? I When Xander initially came out with this, everyone went ape shit. And then when, and I'm, I'm sorry to say it, and Johnny, as I said, I love you. You're a great guy. But when Johnny came out and said he was kind of indifferent, you know, he was, as, as I said, he was looking at both sides. People were then following, you know, like a herd of sheep following that and say, oh, look, Johnny's kind of indifferent. I, I understand that. I agree with his opinion. Stop it. You know, both opinions are valid. But Xander is the first person to speak up about this. And he has a point. And it's funny how most of the YouTubers, the big name YouTubers out there, have not said a word about this or about Concept's dodgy coverage of this or the fact that they're double dipping here. No one has said a negative word because 
these guys who claim to talk for you, for the viewer, for the investor, and give you the uh, an objectified opinion, you know, um, an opinion from their standpoint, their view on the situation, they instead keep quiet because they want to get in good with concept or they want to get in good with, you know, EaseNet or with the Bloodstained Symphony game. Because, uh, by the way, if you check out that Kickstarter page, there's a list of guys on there who are partners. This is what's wrong with gaming. This is what's wrong with YouTube. This is what's wrong with social media because in the end the wrong people are getting the funding and it's an insult, a bloody insult to see the politics that's being played over all this shit. It's ridiculous. As I said, you want to check out more? Go to the bottom there. There's a, a slew of videos that are pointed out on this subject and you know I want to give a big shout out to Johnny Manalium, to Xander Scullion, to Magus uh, and to everybody involved in the Internet Aristocrat as well. And, you know, bringing their viewpoints and bringing out their own opinions on this, because that's what it is. This is a social platform we can give and take opinions. And to those who abuse Patreon and Kickstarters and who slag off their investors, I say this. In the end, you will be found out. In the end, you will basically be shown for the pieces of human excrement that you are. And I really hope, I really, really do hope that you, cr your house of cards comes crashing down sooner rather than later. Because you do not deserve the fan base that you have with the way that you're treating people. As always, guys, check me out on iGot Gameplay 8 p.m. every Saturday. Uh, we did a previous episode on this, on Kickstarter, and, and how we feel that the industry needs a lot more transparency. If you're going to basically put these Kickstarters out, please be as transparent as possible with your fellow viewers. And as always, I'm Michael Burhan, saying that I've got gameplay. Have you? <laughs>